Please be seated. Yesterday, we had an earthquake. Saturday, we may have a hurricane. Today, you learned that you have an 8 o'clock class every day of the week this fall. And this morning, you met your roommate, who made you a Glee mixtape to start off your relationship on a special note. <laughs> but I do have some good news for you. I just saved a bundle on the college's car insurance. <laughs> it's a great deal. I, you know, actually, I have some far better news. Today, you are all McDaniel College. <laughs> my name is Roger Casey. I am McDaniel's president, and I live with my wife, Robin, in the big house across from the theater, surrounded by the very large late-night quiet zone. Um, remember that, remember that. Uh, in short, I am your host for the next four years of college life. You can call me MC Dr. Raj. You can think of me as McDaniel's version of Ryan Seacrest. Welcome to Academic Hollywood, people. This is McDaniel College. <laughs> but before I go any further, how about a big round of applause for the incredible volunteers on our move-in crew today? Thank you. Class of 2015 and other new students, by choosing McDaniel, you have proven that you were not born under a rock. I also want to thank our corporate sponsors at GEICO, by the way, uh, except unlike GEICO, it will take more than 15 minutes of your time to be successful here. By choosing McDaniel, you have already demonstrated to me that you have an excellent decision-making skill. You know how to expect the exceptional. We were clearly meant to be together, like, like Katy Perry and Russell Brand. No, that was a bad example. Okay, um, we were meant to be together like Jay-Z and Kanye. Yeah, <laughs> except Kanye only wishes he had my bling. Isn't that some pretty good bling? Do you like my bling? Yeah. Um, and the faculty. These people behind me in the pizza hats that are wearing these kind of My Little Pony rainbow hoods, these guys, they are your partners for the next four years. And they join me in congratulating you on coming to one of America's top 125 colleges, according to U.S. News. It's top 25, according to Parade Magazine. And it's number one college in a poll conducted of me. <laughs> McDaniel, McDaniel has also recently been included in the new book, America's Best College Secrets. We do not want to be in the second edition. End the secret, people. Tell all your friends. And come September the 10th, my favorite network, the Weather Channel, will be here filming us because McDaniel has just been named one of the seven best colleges in America to tailgate. So, yes. So faculty, let's show the class of 2015 some love for their excellent decision here. Let's act like Tom Cruise talking about Katie Holmes on Oprah Winfrey, all right? In fact, let's give these new students a standing ovation for being at this college, can we? Thank you. <laughs> students, I want you to treat these guys like rock stars because they live to teach you. They pine away in the fjords when you don't visit them during their office hours. 
and we pay them nearly $4.75 an hour to sit in their offices, okay? Yeah, so reach out to them. A longitudinal study at Harvard has proved that students who form personal relationships with faculty early in their college careers will be considerably more successful in college. These faculty will become your friends and mentors, and not just for four years. They will be there for 40. I have witnessed this with my own eyes, all four of them. Yeah. Though I have just now completed one year as president of McDaniel, that's five years in Chinese Olympic gymnast time, I have seen, in that short period of time, I have seen more great teaching than Iowa has Republican presidential candidates. I mean, we are talking about hundreds of great teachers. Learn everything you can from them. They will certainly learn a lot from you. Last year, I started a new convocation tradition. It's what I live for. In the college bylaws, it is now defined as my only official duty. After doing this, they will put me back in my coffin in the basement of Decker until graduation. So it is my tradition to lead the new students in a shout out in unison. In a minute, we are all going to exclaim with some serious swagger, I am McDaniel College. Because you see, a college is not a bunch of buildings, nor a place, nor a mascot, nor even a curriculum. No, a college is a place where you learn how to impress people by using the word nor in a sentence. No, that's not it. A college, a college is here for one reason only, you, our students. And today, at this ceremony, you officially become one of those students. And parents, students, don't listen to this part. Parents, we will do everything we can to make sure that they graduate in four years. Okay? All right. Um. <laughs> students, parents, don't listen to this part. I hope you stay forever. <laughs> So, okay, I am going to count to three. Uh, for those of you who will be retaking the math placement exam on Friday, three is the number after two and before four. Okay. 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 El numero después dos y antes cuatro por los exámenes en español. Right? Right. All right. I'm going to count to three, and we are all going to say in unison, I am, oh, remember now, I am McDaniel College. And if you are shy, you can tweet this to me at McDaniel College. One word, okay? It takes all types, it's okay. And family members, join in as well. I've seen your checks, I know, I feel. Okay, all right. On the count of three, join in with us uh, because you're a part of this family now too, okay? That's T-O-O, -O, not the number two. Don't jump the gun on me, okay, ready, all right. Everybody ready? I am McDaniel College, just like you mean it, on three. Faculty, you gotta help us out here. All right, one, wait a minute. I want to record this on my iPhone for the college archives. Okay? All right, I think we're ready. All right, you ready? One, two, three. I am McDaniel College. One more time. I am McDaniel College. All right, give yourself a big round of applause, all right? That sounded so good, I have songified it. Yeah, so we're going to put this on YouTube. I think we're going to have a hit on our hands tonight. All right? Great. All right. Here's how this convocation works, okay? Shut up. Convocation, that's convo if you're a cool person, or CV if you're texting. Uh, I brought along this entourage over here. They're going to load you up on all the things you need to know. We've got three VIPs, that's very important peeps, to give you the lowdown on how you're going to be successful at McDaniel. Listen to them, all right? They know some stuff. First, we're going to hear from Rula Zaru, who's president of our Student Government Association, whom you will all want as your best friend. Friend her now. Okay. Then, we're going to hear about our faculty from our provost, Dr. Tom Faulkner. Provost, if you are unfamiliar with the term, was actually an analogy on the SAT exam this past year. The correct answer was, provost is to president as mini-me is to Dr. Evil. Okay, so remember that. Uh, and then, finally, we will hear from our Dean of Students and our Vice President for Student Affairs, Beth Garrell. Then I'm going to be back to deliver the 411 in a rousing convocation address, which is sure to go viral on YouTube. So, and then we're going to all sing the alma mater for the first time, you for the first time, not me for the first time, and we'll go out the chapel, we'll exit to a reception on Red Square, and you can take part in one of the college's most sacred rituals. You're going to get to ring the college bell, which will signify your entrance into the McDaniel community. 
And meanwhile, your 1980s parents will be reminiscing about their college years and Anita Ward's 1979 disco hit, Ring My Bell. So, <laughs> what I would like for you to do is to get out your cell phones, take yourself some pictures, text your friends interesting things that you hear our speakers saying, update your status on Facebook, and type pound McDaniel before everything that you post because we're going to make our Google Analytics go through the roof over the next hour, okay? And if you think I'm kidding, you clearly don't know me well enough yet. So, all right. In the words of my Facebook friend, Will I Am, let's get it started in here. All right, Rula, kick us off. Can you hear me? Louder? No? Yes? Good. Good afternoon, class of 2015. I'm sure you've all had your parents, teachers, family members, and possibly friends lecture you about the importance of being successful in college. Not only did they mention it once, but I'm sure it's been the dinner table talk for the past year, or even months. Luckily, my parents took a different approach because they know that I hate repetitive conversation. As a senior in high school, I was beyond anxious for graduation. Not only did I want to get out of high school and begin college, but I was excited for all of the graduation gifts that I was planning on receiving from my family members. This included graduation money, a new MacBook, a new wardrobe, new bedding, and so on. In my mind, these were the things that I needed to start off college on the right foot. So I went on with my summer excited about things. Whenever I had free time, I would go out and buy new things in hope of being more prepared for college. The summer days passed quickly, and move-in day was approaching. This is when it hit me. I was about to start college, and I was not prepared. I was actually really nervous. <laughs> the things that I did not feel would make me ready didn't make me ready, so I was right about my feelings. And a few days later, my parents, knowing how nervous and anxious I was, told me they had something to give me. So naturally, I assumed more money, electronics, or new shoes. Um, I was wrong, really, really wrong. So my parents decided to give me a teddy bear with the letters D-O-B stitched on it. It was from Build-A-Bear. So I thought to myself, D-O-B, what does that mean? In Arabic, Dub means bear. So again, I thought to myself, seriously, a teddy bear that says bear on it? Why would I want a bear that says bear on it? I don't even like bears, and I have been overstuffed animals for the past 10 years. So when my parents saw the confused and unsatisfied look in my eyes, they said to me, this is all you need to be successful in college. Still confused, I rolled my eyes and demanded an explanation. So, turns out, I was wrong. D-O-B does not mean dub in Arabic. D-O-B stood for discipline, order, and balance in English. Discipline, to train oneself to do something in a controlled and habitual way. Order, a state in which everything is in its correct or appropriate place. Balance, the stability of one's mind or feelings, or the condition in which different elements are in the right proportions. Of course, after reading these definitions to me, my parents followed with a lecture, elaborating on each term. I enjoyed what they had to say, for the first 15 minutes at least. And then I moved on with my day and thanked them for the lovely bear and the advice. Now, looking back at this, I am truly beyond appreciative for my D-O-B bear. I can truly say that discipline, order, and balance have been the key ingredients to my success at McDaniel College. I encourage you to discipline yourselves as best you can. Train yourself to sleep at a reasonable time so you can show up to class at a reasonable time. Always complete your assignments to your fullest potential, even if you're out partying the night before. And control your time spent on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and whatever you do. To have order in your life, first you need to start off with a clean room. And this does include your roommate side. I have come to learn that if my room is a mess, my life is a mess. Once you've mastered the art of cleaning your room, which for some of us will take a long time, you will be able to move on to the next step. This includes having order in your life. Don't try to do your homework while you're watching your favorite TV show or while you're listening to your favorite music. Don't try to listen to a friend venting about their bad day 
while you're preoccupied stalking your Facebook friends. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that everything has its time. Trying to do everything all at once is chaotic. This is where balance comes in. Everyone needs time to listen to music, watch TV, party, and stalk their Facebook friends. Don't deprive yourself of any of the things that you enjoy doing. It is just as bad to ignore the things that you want to do as it is to ignore the things that you need to do. Balance the time you spend with your friends. If you're on a sports team, don't limit your friendships to teammates. Don't always eat with your teammates. If you're in a sorority or a fraternity, do the same. I am certain that all of you are incredible individuals, and each of you has a unique persona that should be shared with the rest of the college campus. Challenge yourself to make friends with people who are different than you. Those will be the friends that will allow you to grow as an individual and build onto your unique character. I think I have said enough, and I hope that I have made my point clear to you all. Just remember that with discipline, order, and balance, you can go out every weekend, be the life of the party, and make the Dean's List every single semester. Give everything 100%. You should blast your music, party all night, study, exercise, and even check your Facebook and Twitter 20 times a day, if that's what you choose to do. But just remember that you can't do it all two hours before your class. I cannot promise you perfect days, a perfect semester, or perfect friends. I can only end by saying there are good days and there are bad days, and this is one of them. Congratulations, class of 2015. You have just begun your life-changing four-year roller coaster at McDaniel College. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Thanks, Rula. Uh, good afternoon, class of uh, 2015. Uh, I'm Tom Faulkner. I am, as you heard, the provost, uh, the dean of the faculty. But uh, Dr. Casey got the analogy wrong. No, no, it's not Mini-Me and Dr. Evil. The president is to the provost as the comedian is to the straight man. Okay. <laughs> so the dean gets to be the straight guy. Actually, I do have a lot of fun today because I want to make two great introductions uh, to you. First, I want to introduce you to someone you already know from email, Facebook, the first year blog, and that's Dr. Karen Violanti, the assistant dean for first year students. Karen, could you stand for a minute or two? <laughs> Keep standing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, some of you will be surprised to learn that Karen Violanti is really a person, or at least one person, because for the last three months, whatever time of day or night, uh, you went to the Facebook site and the blog. She was there, live and in real time, answering questions as quickly as you could ask them. But uh, Dean Violanti is for real, and she is your dean. Uh, her focus at McDaniel is to support a positive transition for academic and overall success for all new students at the college. And as a member of the first-year team, she helps plan and support orientation, the first-year seminar program, and the peer mentor program. She believes, and these are her words, that all students have special strengths and talents that support their personal journeys to educational success. Her goal is to enrich the experience of each student and guide each of them in the important transition to college and, be college and beyond. You will want to get to know Dean, Dean Violanti. Say hello to her again. Okay. And uh, now it's my privilege to introduce the faculty of McDaniel College. I know you've been in touch with them all summer, and over the next few days you will finally get to meet them in person. I want to tell you what makes the faculty such an awesome group of people and why they will be such an important part of your life for the next four years. By the way, they really don't always dress like this. Uh, the caps and gowns and hoods and flamboyant colors they're wearing go back to the Middle Ages and indicate the different disciplines and institutions where they took their degrees. There are 31 different majors at McDaniel College, not to mention dual majors, double majors, specializations, minors, and five-year double degrees with our graduate program. We also have a student design major, though in fact every major here is student designed, full of choices and possibilities. One of the best parts of your education is going to be working with many faculty from across the college as they help you to design your major. At McDaniel, your education will be an international education. On the stage behind me today, there are faculty members who come from 
Bangladesh, Chile, China, France, Germany, Greece, Israel, Italy, Kenya, Malawi, Mexico, Morocco, New Zealand, Poland, Russia, and Ukraine. Oh, and the United States. Oops, just missed that. They are a well-traveled group. This year, our faculty will lead students on January term programs to destinations from Argentina to China, from Italy to the Bahamas, from Belize to Romania. More than 20 of them have taught at our branch campus in the heart of Central Europe, McDaniel Europe in Budapest, and you should think about studying there too. McDaniel faculty are experts in their fields. 99% of our tenure track faculty hold the PhD or the highest degree in their field. When they are not in their classrooms and offices, they are doing research in our libraries and labs, attending conferences and meetings around the world. Last year alone, McDaniel faculty received 19 professional awards, attended 159 professional conferences, gave 263 lectures and presentations, published 17 books and 36 articles and 87 newspaper pieces. Many of these were collaborative projects with students who were co-researchers and even co-publishers. Last year, there were 292 separate faculty-student research collaborations. I hope that every one of you, while you're here, will work with a member of the faculty on a research project. You will be uh, impressed by the depth of their knowledge, their love of learning, and by their teaching. We place such a premium on teaching that each year we select a member of the faculty for the Ira G. Zepp Distinguished Teaching Award. Last spring, we presented that award to Dr. Stephanie Madsen in the psychology department, and yesterday we presented a raft of other awards for books, publications, creativity, all listed in your program. This faculty will teach you well. They will stretch your mind and make you think in new ways, whether you are studying the ethics of stem cell research or the history of slavery, reading detective novels or the Constitution or the Communist Manifesto, doing experiments in thermal luminescence or looking at Japanese paintings, speaking Arabic or working with a local nonprofit agency, writing a poem or watching bird migrations from the shores of the Chesapeake or taking photographs in Greece and Turkey. They will advise you and mentor you. They will help you connect with new experiences and opportunities. A study abroad program, a service learning project, an internship, a summer research experience, graduate school, our graduate school. They will challenge you again and again. Read this article, take this course, go to this lecture, see this film, come with me to this concert, come with me to Africa, polish up this essay for a contest, apply for this fellowship, write for the free press, live in the French house, study in China, do a poster, build a website, work for the environment, work with the Boys and Girls Club. They will point you to a world of possibilities. I have only one word of advice today, accept their invitation. Students in the class of 2015, you have the privilege of studying with one of the finest groups of teachers anywhere in the world. It is my pleasure to present you formally the faculty of McDaniel College. Will the faculty please stand and will you please say hello to them. Thank you. Good afternoon. Parents, would you please stand for a moment? Parents, I would encourage you to take a look around this room at the other parents. Those will be your in-laws. <laughs> please be seated. <laughs> You're going to think a lot about what you're saying now out loud, aren't you? <laughs> and parents, before I forget it, I know I talked about it in my session earlier today, but I'll be out back at a card table later. If you want to drop off that $50 check for having the camera installed in your student's room, we'll get that started tomorrow. <laughs> Seriously. S seriously. It is a great pleasure for me to be here with all of you today and join you and others here in welcoming you to this great college. First steps into any new environment are always challenging and interesting, they're exciting and they're anxiety producing. 
Newcomers find themselves baffled by the new geography and the new social networks through which they have to navigate. Getting lost and having awkward interactions are part of the learning process, and the familiar comforts of home can seem very distant. No matter how much we took for granted before, now we long for them and the security that they provided. I suggest that during the first few days here, you learn about the college from the ground up. I urge you to walk this incredibly gorgeous campus, wander around it, but the trees and the buildings and the walkways and the squirrels who think they own the entire campus become a part of your daily life. Your greatest teacher on this campus will be the campus itself, and it will call out to you to explore its various pathways and new directions. The campus encourages thoughtfulness, reflection, and an emerging wisdom. The college is made up of an incredible group of college students, faculty, and staff members. And as you settle in and manage to get lost a little less often and begin to feel more comfortable walking into GLAR, just remember that the feelings of being overwhelmed will quickly evolve into feelings of excitement and enjoyment knowing that you belong here. The first semester will go quickly, and in no time, much to the disdain of your parents, you'll be referring to McDaniel College as your home on the hill. About 10 years ago, the college changed its name to honor William Roberts McDaniel, for that one individual so represents the men and women whose lives have been changed on the hill, and who in turn influenced so many across the world. McDaniel's story began on a move-in day over 130 years ago and is highly re relevant on this day of beginnings. On that hot late summer day, McDaniel, then only 16 years of age, set off from his family's farm across the Maryland's eastern shore. He traveled by steamboat across the Chesapeake Bay and then boarded a train to Westminster. Not exactly the SUV journeys that most of you made today, but that was the year 1877. And on that day, McDaniel would begin a relationship that lasted 65 years as a college student, an administrator, mathematics professor, and beloved by all. He came to personify the college's mission and its essence. But let's go back to that fateful day in 1877 as that young freshman set off for college. I wonder what he was thinking as he traveled to Westminster, what was his life going to be like, and what were his hopes and his dreams. And my guess is that William McDaniel's thoughts and concerns in 1877 were not unlike yours as you too have made your journey to Westminster this morning. You should recognize this as a critical moment in your life and that today you begin an important new chapter in your life, your education, and in your future. William McDaniel's college was only 10 years old at the time and was comprised of fewer than 60 students and a handful of dedicated professors. It had no running water, no indoor plumbing or electricity, and students studied by coal lamps and coal stoves heated the one college student building. So while I could dwell on the obvious differences between you and him, there are also aspects of your experience quite similar. You've arrived today at McDaniel College and in many important ways, you are now on your own as he was. You will face new challenges without the familiar support of family and friends, and figuratively, you have left the family farm, set sail across the bay, and landed at McDaniel College. At times, you're going to feel yourself shedding your old familiar ways, and you'll be challenged by many new complexities of college life, and I'd like to hit just a couple of those. The challenge of time. Manage your time. If you don't manage your time, it won't manage you. I encourage you to study and play, and study and sleep, and study and study and study. <laughs> Next is the challenge of choice. Get involved with the campus activity or organization, at least one. Joining an organization on this campus will help you to find friends, it will keep you connected, and you are more likely to walk across that commencement stage. There's also the challenge of new people. Get to know professors, staff members, administrators, and your classmates. I believe with my whole heart that building relationships is one of the best things that you will do while you're here at McDaniel. And there's the challenge of integrity. Students here are treated as adults, and the honor code is the basis for the social contract that you'll have with your faculty members. And finally, the laundry challenge. You must do your laundry. The laundry fairy will not come to your room to do it for you. <laughs> not all clothing should be washed together. <laughs> Over the next couple of weeks, we will see many of you in pink clothing. We know, <laughs> we know that this happens. We'll not make fun of you, but we'll challenge you to learn about the laundry machine the proper detergent to use, and the way to divide up your clothing. Remember that you are not alone. Everything about McDaniel College is designed to encourage a community that will serve as your support group. Small classes, close relationships with faculty and staff who care about your learning and your success. That is who we are at McDaniel College. And finally, it's important to remember the words of William McDaniel that kept him going during his student years and for the rest of his life. His personal motto was known as 
there shall be no Alps, which was often heard by his classmates during his student days. Clearly, obstacles of huge proportions loom before him. But McDaniel realized that his own positive approach would allow him to scale those heights and to meet his dreams. And for the rest of his days, he would need to see no mountain as too high to climb. Students, your success will largely be determined by your attitude. You too could overcome virtually any obstacle with an approach similar to McDaniel's. There shall be no Alps. Again, I welcome you and your wonderful families to the special community. We look forward to climbing those mountains with you. Best wishes for a wonderful year at McDaniel College. Thank you. Will the incoming class of 2015 please stand? Recently arrived members of our community, you present yourselves as new students at McDaniel College. By now, you know that you are most welcome and that we believe you are undertaking one of the most exciting adventures of your lives. It's my privilege formally to introduce you into this college community, and I do so with all the obligations, rights, and privileges that are integral to this community. Congratulations and welcome. Please be seated. I have jumped out of a plane. I have walked on the Galapagos Islands. I have stood on the pyramids of the Maya and the ancient Egyptians. I have trekked through the remote jungles in Asia and South America. I have trekked through the jungle room at Graceland. So trust me, when I, what I say to you, I do not say lightly. It is one of the high points in my life to be speaking to you. I have the greatest job in the world. Any pessimist who tells me that there is no hope, that the future is not bright, has not had the pleasure to stand where I do and to look at the faces that I see. I see the future. I see doctors and lawyers and engineers and CEOs and teachers and musicians and artists. I see people who will change the world, people who will fix the mess that my generation has gotten us into. 25 years from now, assuming machines have not taken over the world and plugged us into the matrix, Welcome to the desert of the real, Neil. 25 years from now, I will remember this moment vividly. And I know that 25 years from now, when you are asked the question, who delivered your convocation address, you will quickly reply, uh, some bald guy, I think. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, let me ask you all to take a deep breath in, exhale slowly, Lower your expectations, and let's begin, okay? <clears throat> I'm trying to make this as relevant as possible to you, so I am actually texting my comments to the entire class right now. I was going to tweak them, but the provost used all 140 of my characters up, okay? So, I will probably have to read my comments aloud for the faculty, because a lot of them are even older than I am. And some of them actually think that a text is an expensive book that you buy for your class, okay? So, but if you would like to purchase them off of iTunes, I'm talking about my remarks, not the faculty, uh, they will be available for 99 cents later or you can tweet at Dr. Raj for a .pdf along with a .jpg and or a .wav. OMG, LOL. <laughs> okay. Um, look, if you can't tell this already, I love Twitter. I love cats, too. <laughs> Every kind of cat. <laughs> I just want to hug them, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Somebody already posted that. Somebody posted that video on YouTube already. 37 million people 
have viewed that. When you realize that 37 million people around the world will watch a video about a woman crying about cats or about Charlie Sheen ranting or a preacher praying boogity, 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 amen. Uh, Yet meanwhile, only 14% of Americans know that there are three branches of government or that the Electoral College is not an Ivy League school. When you grasp this fact, you will realize that with your McDaniel education, you can rule the universe because nobody is minding the store these days. Sorry, I digress here. I was talking about Twitter. All right, Twitter to me, I like the discipline of Twitter. I like limiting your observations to 140 characters or less. I think that's intellectually challenging. And I'm sure by now that some of you have been up since uh, 5 a.m. or wishing that our convocation ceremony were less than 140 characters. But uh, anyway, I see Twitter as being a kind of a postmodern version of the sonnet. You know, I'm, I'm challenged sometimes. I want to try to write tweets that are exactly 140 characters. You should try this. Tweeting reminds me of something that David Mamet once wrote. If you can't put it in 25 words or less, it ain't going in TV Guide. Now, that would have been a good tweet except tweeting hadn't been invented when David Mamet said that. A lot has changed since Mamet wrote that phrase. Regardless of your age, a lot has changed since you began your education in the first grade. Unless we have a couple of child geniuses in our first year class today, I'm pretty confident there was no tweeting when you were in the first grade. Twitter is just one of an enormous amount of changes that have occurred since I was in the first grade, back in the mid-20th century, when I walked to school in the snow uphill in both directions, barefoot, because we had no shoes. You know, back then, back then, you sometimes had words with friends. You didn't play words with friends. Back then, iPhone, that was a subject and a verb. iPhone, you phone, he, she phones. And back then, I saw this news story once on a brand new channel called CNN. It was about an ostrich in South Africa who tried to swallow a child. That's about as close to angry birds as I got back then. <laughs> so guess what? 25 years, 30 years from now, this same thing's going to happen to you. Yeah, it's going to change. I've thought about some sentences that you might not ever utter in your adult lifetimes. Here's an example. I can't find so-and-so. Yeah, because you're going to be able to find anybody. You're always going to be connected to them and in touch with them, and they're going to check in, and they're probably going to have a GPS device in their body. You know. Here's another one. How do I fill in the blank? Because you're going to be able to search the Internet, and you're going to be able to find out anything that you want. You know, what I know is that your liberal arts education is going to prepare you for this change unlike any other kind of education that you can get. It prepared me to tweet even though tweeting didn't exist. Charles Darwin wrote, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one most adaptable to change. I know that this does not explain Justin Bieber very well, um, but the reality, the reality of constant change is what your McDaniel education is going to prepare you best for. I'm sorry, I just dangled a preposition. I'll rephrase that. The reality is what your McDaniel education will prepare you best for, friends. So with Twitter as my discipline, I'm going to share with you today some important lessons I have learned, important lessons which can be summarized in 140 characters or less. We'll call them the tweets to live your life by. By which to live your life, never mind. All right, my first tweet comes from the Gospel according to Stevie Wonder as he sung it in his 1972 epistle called Superstition, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. I hope you know this song. Parents, you can sing it along. When you believe in things that you don't understand, you know what happens to you? Then you suffer. That's what Stevie Wonder says. When you believe in things you don't understand, then you suffer. In my humble opinion, that's IMHO for those of you texting over here, uh, in my humble opinion, if most of Washington, D.C. would listen to these lyrics, about four-fifths of the putrid backbiting which suffices as political rhetoric in our nation today would just fall into silence. Yeah. Do you think Glenn Beck or Keith Olbermann own any Stevie Wonder albums? I'm not sure. 
Stevie Wonder offers the same advice as another Stevie. Habit number five from Stephen Covey's best-selling book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen Covey writes this, seek first to understand. That's another pretty good tweet. But Stevie Wonder said it first, people, and so I want you to quit reading self-help books and listen to Motown because you will learn a lot more, okay? That's worth applause, I know. Yeah. If your college education teaches you anything, I hope it will develop in you an insatiable desire to want to understand the things that you don't believe in to want to know about everything, to have a curiosity that disallows your espousing anything until you've analyzed it, criticized it, and theorized it. Seek first to understand, or else Stevie Wonder will tell you, then you will suffer. My second tweet comes from F. Scott Fitzgerald, who said, the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind and still retain the ability to function. So here's an example of that. I have a PhD in English, I love hip-hop, and I never miss a NASCAR race. I am seriously messed up, people. <laughs> but I know who I am. I like chaos theory. I like Henri Matisse. I like Spanish verbs. Because my liberal arts education made me curious about everything. It made me want to find connections between all kinds of things. And most importantly, it gave me tools to investigate. Let curiosity drip from your pores. Ask questions constantly. And if you ever say this phrase, this may be a dumb question, but I will hunt you down and I will kill you, okay? <laughs> I want you to know, why do hurricanes appear when they do? Find that out before this weekend, please. Um, why does the chemical composition of caffeine look the way it does? Why do people watch Hannah Montana? I, I want to know, why do we seem to be able to remember all the words to Shakira, all the arrest records of Lindsay Lohan, all the men that Meredith Grey has dated, but we cannot remember what is the capital of South Dakota? What is the capital of South Dakota? Pier, pear, pear. Yeah, well, I'm curious, you know. Be curious, but be curious about important things, please. All the lyrics of Barry Manilow are stored in my head, you know. Episodes of happy days infiltrate my neurons. 20 years from now, you do not want your head to be filled with Sean Kingston going suicidal, suicidal. You don't want that in your mental space. You know, you've got an opportunity for the next four years to fill your mind with the tools of numerous disciplines in your quest to find out about everything that interests you, everything you're curious about. And if you're not curious about anything, don't waste your parents' money. Take your tuition, buy a van, drive across America, and come back when you realize that at McDaniel you're surrounded by a faculty, staff, and fellow students who can be your partners on the most amazing intellectual journey you will ever have in your life. But curiosity is the key to all of it. And besides, gas prices have made it too expensive to drive across America. My third tweet is advice from a guy who might seem very different from me, but whose trailer park start near Detroit surprisingly reminds me a lot of my own life. In Lose Yourself, which is from my favorite urban philosopher Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem, Slim Shady himself, I think he really nails it when he rhymes my favorite hook of all time, which is this. Lose yourself in the music, the moment. You better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo! Let me, uh, let me translate that for the older people in the house. Um, in the Latin, uh, Marshall is saying carpe diem. Carpe diem. Now listen closely to the preface of, of this rap from 8 Mile. I'm serious. I'm going to skip the part about bombing on his sweater. Okay. And if you're thinking about the music in your mind, try to remember it before it became that stupid Chrysler commercial. Okay. This is what he says. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted, one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? Class of 2K15, do not miss your chance to blow. Don't let it slip. You've got to become deeply attuned to the world and yourself to be ready when the moment presents itself. Carpe diem. Don't be afraid. Slim Shady is not afraid. 
My next tweet is by someone I guarantee you've never heard of, Mr. Nyoman D'Artagnan, who is a Balinese taxi driver. When I was visiting Bali, Roger, Mr. I can navigate my way around anywhere in the world, studied all of the road maps as I do every place that I visit. I love maps. In fact, I pride myself on being able to give directions to people in a place I've only been once in my lifetime. So here we are. We're on the island of Bali, and my wife and I are in perhaps the most luscious, beautiful landscape on the earth, these rice fields tumbling down the mountainscapes and rushing streams in the valleys below. And that morning, I'd open up this map of Bali between the bananas on our breakfast table, and I took a piece of dental floss, and I started from my hotel, and I measured to this sacred temple, Tana Lot, we were going to visit. And uh, they're having this spectacular festival there with women wearing fruit offerings on their heads so high that the men have to walk in front of them with bamboo poles and they raise the telephone lines so that they can actually clear them. So I now know the fastest way to get there. Later that day, Nyoman D'Artagnan is driving around these incredible winding roads and these beautiful vistas, but Nyoman is not following the path that I had marked out in the map. So I asked Nyoman, is there a faster way to get there? On one of these curvy mountain roads, and he did not break, Nyoman turned completely around from the front seat, and facing the back seat, he inquired, why would you want to get there any faster? Why would you want to get there any faster? That's a great tweet to live your life by. Here I am, I'm in exotic Bali with my boo, I'm riding through the most beautiful terrain I have ever seen, and I can't let go of this American drive for efficiency. Is there a faster way to get there? That's a preposterous question. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Nyoman was trying to teach me something. Even Miley Cyrus, for God's sakes, figured this out when she sings, ain't about how fast I get there, it's the climb. Yeah. Even Lady Gaga gets this when she tells you to just dance, to dance, to dance. I mean, the lesson is that you've got to slow down. You've got to listen. You see, your liberal arts education can teach you, and you can learn from anyone. Enjoy the journey. My next, my next tweet, this is the answer to the chief question on the mind of every college student. What should I do with my life? The, th the theologian Frederick Beatner gives the best answer to that question I've ever read. He says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Whether you are religious or not, I think that's a remarkable calling to find that place in life where your deep joy meets the world's deep need. That's great advice. This world has a lot of deep needs. When you can line up the thing that makes you happiest with the thing that can help someone else the most, your life will be really sweet. A recent poll conducted by Gallup surveyed people worldwide in an answer to the question, what makes you happy? Regardless of culture, two standout responses were these. First, learn something new, and two, help someone. That ought to make the people sitting on this stage the happiest people in the world. You know, I feel amazingly fortunate in my life that I found a place where deep joy and need meet by being a college teacher and now by being a college president. I feel amazingly fortunate that I found a place, this place, McDaniel, that articulated to me a deep need. I feel amazingly fortunate that I will get to be a part of many of your lives and that I got to talk to you today. So McDaniel, as you begin your college journey today to find that best place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet, to learn something and to help someone, I leave you with my final tweet. It's the fundamental philosophy by which I work every day of my life. I wear an armband to remind me of a dear departed friend who shared this philosophy with me. It is from the Tao Te Ching. It's attributed to Lao Tzu, the father of Taoism. This is my translation. When the teacher is finished, the pupils say, amazing, we learned this by ourselves. It's not about me, it's about you. You are all McDaniel College, and you are all amazing. I so much look forward to greeting you on stage four years from now, shaking your hand and saying, congratulations, graduate.
But until then, why would you want to get there any faster? Enjoy the ride. My name is Roger Casey, and I believe in this college. Thank you very much. Thank you. As part of uh, our welcome to you as new members of the community, you're all invited afterwards to a reception in Memorial Plaza. But first, let me say a word about our procedure from now on. It's traditional at the college to welcome the newest members with a symbolic ringing of the Old Main Bell, which is in front of the Hoover Library. The cornerstone for Old Main was laid in 1866, and the building has housed a number of campus facilities. It was torn down in 1959, but the original bell tower rests on the brick pedestal there and features the four cornerstones from Old Main. So when the ceremony's over, the marshals are going to lead all of us off the stage and out of the building, and all of you, the new students, are going to follow, and you're going to go to where the bell will be, and we'll ring you into the McDaniel community. I'll start by ringing, and then I hope every one of you will take a chance to come up and ring the bell. Your family and the friends, come up, photograph, observe, don't be bashful, put it on YouTube, give the bell a ring. So all of you in the back, if you can wait for us to progress, that will be great. And at the reception, we hope that all of you, students and parents alike, will take a moment to say hello to all of these folks, to Dr. Faulkner, Dean Garrell, Dr. Violante, and to me. If you're confused, don't worry about it. The people with the big sticks will tell you where to go. So if you want to stand, Mr. Dix is going to play our album through once. The words are in your program, and we'll start singing the second time through. <laughs> 